Hello, my friends. You got a Manchester United star player here. I'm going to take on the other side. Let's play some soccer. Ah, mm. <laughs> oh, seriously, suck at this game. But I can burn. Oh, who's on my side? So much for me being from Manchester United. These guys are way too good, man. This is a great start to birding in the cloud forests in Panama. These guys are pale in comparison. These guys are really good. This is awesome. Gracias amigos. Thank you so much, man. Nice meeting you all. Woo! Let's go birding. This is the perfect habitat for this bird. Yeah! That's what I call birding. Awesome. That's our golden bird. The hummingbird family are one of the best represented families of birds in the entire of Panama. And on this week's show, we'll be searching for an endemic hummingbird called the Viraguan mango. With its vast expanses of tropical rainforest, dual oceanic coastline and mountain ranges, the Isthmus of Panama is one of the most biologically diverse areas in the world. Its unique ecology stems in large part from its situation as a transcontinental country, a land bridge between two very different mega land masses. Birds are a primary indicator of biodiversity, and for such a small land, Panama takes the cake. It has nearly a thousand species of birds, more than all of North America combined. But what's really astounding is that over 350 species have been counted in a single 24-hour period. So it was with great anticipation and trepidation that we headed out to Canopy Tower from Panama City to introduce ourselves to the avian delights that the country has to offer. At Canopy Tower, we were met by my good friend, Carlos Bethencourt, who was going to be our guide during the visit. Hey, Carlos, good to see you again. Hey, James, James. welcome to, to Panama. Carlos, I've seen him more in the United States than any other place. He comes and does uh, trips over to the United States and it's great to see you on your home soil. Well, welcome to Panama. You know, it's great to have a adventure here and we're going to have fun. This is Canopy Tower Lodge and this is another birding adventure. I came here by accident in a way because I had tried to get a, a, another location for a, a birder's lodge in Pipeline Road. And I had a great location for it, and then, but it was turned down. And then I, had, I found another location, it was turned down, and then it, by the government, because all of this is government land. And then in the second meeting, a, a fellow at, at that meeting told me there is a place called Semaphore Hill, and it will be transferred to Panama at the end of 99. So I came on August 22 of 97. It was the old radar tower, because this used to be an Air Force radar tower it had been abandoned by the U.S. Air Force. Our first morning was spent marveling at the diversity of the rainforest and really getting to grips with the region's beautiful bird life, especially the variety of hummingbirds. But before we left, we set up our trusty bird cam to see if we could capture the hummingbird activity at the feeders close to Canopy Tower. When we returned about two hours later, we were astounded to find over a thousand images had been taken of 11 different species in every possible pose imaginable. Another family of tiny birds that were really enticing to me were the mannequins. And we got some wonderful views of lecking red cap mannequins and blue crown mannequins. We also got to see a white ruffed mannequin female. This red cap mannequin is such a cool little bird, but even cooler than the bird itself is its weird mating display, intricately performed at a carefully chosen lek or breeding site. A lek, like the one chosen by this male golden collared mannequin, 
is almost like a bodybuilding podium, but the emphasis is on feathers and colour rather than sweat and muscles. In the afternoon we decided to take a break from birding and experience another pastime for which Panama is famous. The name Panama means abundance of fish and butterflies. And whilst we were at Canopy Tower, we went out with Jacob to do a little peacock bass fishing on Lake Gatun. Peacock bass fishing in Panama is legendary and it's not unusual to catch over 50 fish in a morning. Carlos was fishing for the first time and I promised to show him the ropes. Of course, Carlos ended up catching the biggest fish. Well, the fish were small, but we caught plenty and seeing Carlos sweat on his first fish was well worth the effort. After a hard day's birding, nothing better than a couple of drinks with some friends. We've got Edie and Tom over here from the United States. We're down in Panama and we've just had a great day's birding at the Canopy Tower Lodge. And I believe that you are the SOB, right? Um, Tell us what an SOB is. An SOB is the spouse of a birder. Wow. <laughs> All right. How did that and name... It's been for many, many years. <laughs> okay. How did that name come about? Oh, we were um, visiting with some friends one night and a very, very proper southern gentleman came up to me after a long day of birding and said, well, he and Tom had been birding, and said, uh, why, Edie, you are nothing but an SOB. And I said, sir, what did you say to me? And he said, well, ma'am, that means you are the spouse of a birder. <laughs> well, cheers to SOBs. I like the SOBs. Yes, exactly. There you go. Cheers, ma'am. After a couple of well-earned drinks, it was off to bed early to get a good night's rest before our journey to Canopy Lodge, three hours away from Canopy Tower and one of the more productive bases from which to explore the region's hummingbirds. All the hummingbird species have such intriguing names. Names like mountain gems, emeralds, hermits, coquettes and plumeleteers. These names embody the spirit of these wonderful tiny birds. Whilst we were at Canopy Lodge in Western Panama, we found a myriad of different hummingbird species. Canopy Lodge is situated in the El Valle region in west central Panama, an hour's drive from the Pacific Ocean. This place is just a birder's paradise, and well stocked bird feeders mean one doesn't need to venture far from the lodge in order to see a multitude of bird species. We were specifically interested in the hummingbirds, and Carlos escorted us around the gardens to see what we could find. We're just walking around the garden looking at the feeders, looking at different hummingbirds that we can find around here. And this is one of the common ones, the white vented plumeleteer. This is one of the hummingbirds that have a long, a dark tail, black feet, and a nice white vent. This looks like a young male. As you can see, the chest start getting all this green feather. This is a rufous tail hummingbird. As you can see, a little bit of the rufous on the tail, the red bill, and at the end of the bill, you can see a little bit of the black tip at the end. This is an Amacelia species, which can be very territorial. And once he gets a feeder or a flower, he doesn't like any other hummingbird to come in close to the flower. So he will start chasing them away. So this is a really cool hummingbird, rufous-tailed hummingbird. Rufous-tailed hummingbirds nest throughout the year, and this little youngster is growing fast on the high-protein diet of insects that its parents provide. After it leaves the nest, it will feed more and more on the nectar of flowering plants. What we're looking here right now is a snowy-bellied hummingbird, which looks like a young one, because it doesn't have that coppery tail, all nice and dark, and it doesn't have that bright green throat. But if you can see a little bit of the white belly, sometime when we get the uh, front view, that this hummingbird looks like he's wearing pants. This beautiful hummingbird is a green hermit and it's got one of the longest bills out of all the hummingbird species in Panama. Whilst on our search for the various hummingbird species, Carlos took us out looking for owls. And one might ask the question, why look for owls during the day? But it just so happens that finding owls at their roosting sites during the day can be some of the best viewing opportunities of these great nocturnal birds. The most magnificent of these owls was the spectacled owl that Carlos managed to find us. This is 
really cool to find this bird. When it comes in terms of night birds, are very difficult to see at night and during the day. So we're really lucky to get this spectacle owl, which is the biggest of the owl in central Panama area. The young ones are really beautiful. They got a white head with a black mask and they're really impressive. When you look at the eye of this bird, it really tells you a lot. You can feel the connection when you look into the owl's eye. So this uh, spectacle owl, he can feed on mice, uh, insects, and other small little owls as well. So this is an area in Olga Moa Row where this bird has been nesting for the last six years. But it's not guaranteed that you're gonna see it during the week. There's week that I come three, four times with a group and we do not get this bird. So you always have to be really lucky to get it even during the daytime. And whilst looking through some of the lowland forests, he also found us a mottled owl, which was quite a treat because this is a very tough bird to find. This is a mottled owl and they hardly ever come out into the open. This is an owl that is heard more often than it's seen. Even at night, this mottled owl likes to hunt in very, very thick vegetation and very seldom comes out into the open. But it wasn't just the owls and the hummingbirds that captured our attention. Panama is home to seven different distinct species of primates. We got to see several different species, including the tiny and endearing Jeffroy's tamarin. This little subspecies of tamarin is endemic to the region of Panama and Colombia, and they move about in family groups up to 40 individuals. They're omnivorous, moving through the secondary forest growth, mainly feeding on insects, fruit, the sap of trees. And interestingly enough, the one thing that differentiates tamarins from marmosets is the fact that tamarins have canines longer than their incisors. And if you look at that guy calling right now, you can actually see his teeth. Look at those canines longer than the incisors. Whilst birding in Panama, we constantly heard the sounds of groups of mantled howler monkeys. These eerie sounding vocalists make loud and weird howling choruses that can be heard from miles away. If you're not familiar with these calls, you might fear for your life as you scan the forest constantly for some massive, previously undescribed carnivore. Large and mostly black, they even look ferocious. But in reality, they're relatively peaceful vegetarians. Howlers mark their territory with these deep, guttural sounds. In the presence of humans, they're actually a little timid and tend to stay high in the canopy. Seeing white-faced capuchin monkeys was the culmination of our primate rendezvous. These are seriously entertaining monkeys and one can sit for hours watching them at their antics. Smaller than the howler monkeys, but larger than the Jeffroy's tamarin is the white-faced capuchin, a monkey which is widespread across Panama. These cute little monkeys spend a lot of their time foraging on tree trunks like this. Capuchin monkeys need to drink fresh water daily. And because of the large population of caiman and American crocodile here, they don't like to go right down to the water's edge to drink. So what they do is they make their way down the trunk of a tree and they dip their hands or their tails in the water and then they run up, quickly run up the branch again and then they suck the water out of the fur on their hands or on their tails. That means that they don't need to spend a lot of time down at the water where they are at risk of falling prey to crocodiles and to caiman. You can see here we've got a mother with its baby and this baby is probably only a few months old. You can see it clinging to the fur of the mother underneath. These capuchin monkeys are doing what's called aloe grooming right now. Grooming each other, looking for fleas and they'll actually share the grooming. Normally the less dominant monkey will be the one that grooms the more dominant monkey but they'll also exchange and it's a way that they cement the bond between the family groups. In the same tree as the capuchin monkeys we've just seen on the underside of this big trunk we've just seen a group of five long-nosed bats. These small little bats are nocturnal, they'll roost there during the day and come out at night to feed over the open water millions of insects that will fly over this open water at night. After birding continuously for days, it was time to have some fun before our search the next day for the endemic and localized Viraguan mango.
It's not a birding adventure! Woo! That was cool. Right up in the canopy with the birds where I want to be. That was fun. Let's do it again. The morning of our search for the Viraguan mango, Carlos took us on the quest for two very strange species of hummingbirds close to the lodge. The first was the crazy and bizarre looking Rufus Crested Coquette. This is the tiniest aerial punk rocker around, the Rufus Crown Coquette. Look at his incredible hairdo. He's got that punk hairstyle and he dips that bill into these flowers to get at the nectar. Awesome, Rufus Crown Coquette. After spotting the Coquette, we headed for a particular flowering heliconia plant that we knew the sickle bill liked to frequent. After waiting an hour at the plant, this aptly named hummingbird made a brief but highly appreciated appearance. Its specialized bill is perfectly suited for feeding on these flowers and it can reach nectar that other species just can't get to. The search for our golden bird, the Viraguan mango, involved a journey down to the Pacific coast where we looked for the bird in Pacific dry forest. Panama is one of the few places in the world where you can be at the Pacific Ocean in the morning and be at the Atlantic Ocean in the late morning. This is the Pacific and right next to us, next to this Pacific Ocean beach is Pacific dry forest. And as we move into higher elevations, the forest changes as we get into the foothills and even further as we get into the cloud forest at the higher elevations. It then does the same thing on the other slope until it gets to the Atlantic, with the forests changing as the elevation decreases. We're here looking for our golden bird for this week, the Viraguan mango, and it is found specifically in Pacific dry forest. Let's go see if we can find one. The first time I saw a Viraguan mango was right down at the Chiru area and a spot that have been explored by our team of Canopy Lodge Guy. And once I got to see that bird, I could not believe that this bird was seen so easy and an open tree telescope view and picture through my telescope. It was really good to see that. Another excitement experience for me. Finding the mango was much easier than anticipated. And almost immediately, I spotted a male displaying in one of the dry trees. Look at this beautiful Varanguan mango. This will be a male displaying his white pectoral tufts to attract females. And we've seen quite a few of them this morning, particularly because they seem to be displaying in the area now. It must be right before the breeding season. Not a lot is known about this bird. This is the Varanguan mango, one of the endemic birds to Panama. There are 12 endemic birds, three of them are hummingbirds, and this is one. The Varanguan mango has only recently been discovered in this area in the last sort of two or three years. And in fact, Carlos tells me that today has been the most amount of Varangua mangoes that he has seen in the morning. I think we've got eight of them, right? Eight of them, yeah. And That's I think great. the fact is to the, a lot of the uh, wild catch of tree flowering and mating display. I've seen some mating display here. So that will be good, maybe the breeding in this area. Excellent, that's our golden bird, the Varangua mango. Yeah. My highlights on, the, on my birding career there's so many, so many good things about birding. I love the legs of mannequins. I love to see them displaying. The army ant swarm, the trogons, the mutmut, -mut, flycatcher. I can't believe how those flycatchers, when they're nesting, they can bring so much food in and out of the nest. So I love everything, but the highlight of my birding is to see people living happy, the country. Bird watching is very important for the conservation of birds because it creates employment in a sustainable activity. We can show the same bird a hundred times and the forest is still there. And that's the best thing about this job, that we create sustainable jobs for conservation. The huge diversity of hummingbird species that we came across in Panama are synonymous with what this country has to offer. So much diversity in terms of mammals, reptiles and birds, and great scenery and warm, welcoming people. Panama is a destination that everybody must get to.
Happy ending.